Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Boeing 737 MAX 10 approved for testing. Mount Rushmore helicopter tours restricted to half a mile. SpaceX updates details about Starship IFT-2 test launch. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Boeing 737 MAX 10 approved for testing. Boeing 737 MAX 10 has been given the go-ahead for type inspection authorization by the FAA, allowing the regulator to begin its own testing on the aircraft after hundreds of in-house flights. Boeing is understandably antsy to get that type certificate in hand for the MAX 10, given a long line of back orders that number somewhere north of 1,000 aircraft. The MAX 10's development timeline suffered badly at the hands of the 737 MAX debacle, being grounded after some highly visible crashes and a continued subject of congressional humming and hawing. Design changes mandated by the MAX family's regulatory review added additional delays to the process, shaking up the flight deck of the near-production aircraft at the 11th hour with a few new switches and alarms. Ultimately, despite rolling off the line into fresh air for the first time in 2019, the aircraft didn't take flight until midway through 2021. The delay gave Airbus a rare chance to pick up orders around the world, particularly finding success with a new crop of ULCCs and aircraft lessers. But time is up for the longtime rival. Boeing says it expects MAX 10 certification by 2024. And coming up after the break, AirVenture Oshkosh dates confirmed through 2027. SkyLeader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, SkyLeader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. SkyLeader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. EAA AirVenture Oshkosh dates confirmed through 2027. EAA has released dates for the next four AirVenture schedules, and as usual, the ANN gang will be there to cover it all for you. The current schedule for EAA AirVenture Oshkosh at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, has been confirmed through 2027. EAA's annual fly-in convention has been held since 1953 and has occurred in Oshkosh since 1970. Upcoming event dates are July 22nd through 28th, 2024, July 21st through 27th, 2025, July 20th through 26, 2026, and July 26th through August 1st, 2027. Liberty University adds 16 more Cessna Skyhawks. Textron Aviation has reached an agreement with Liberty University for the purchase of 16 Cessna Skyhawks to be delivered beginning in 2026. The aircraft will add to Liberty University's existing fleet of 24 Skyhawks to ensure that the university's students receive the highest quality pilot training aircraft available. Since the 172 first took flight in 1955, over 45,000 Cessna 172 aircraft have been delivered to customers around the world. FAA Review Finds Inadequate ATC Staffing Around the Country the FAA's National Airspace System Safety Review Team issued its report into recent snafus involving aircraft and the public eye, and the National Association of Air Traffic Controllers feels quite vindicated. 
The NITCA was glad to read that staffing issues, a longtime point of contention they've had with the FAA, were found to be a large part of recent problems. A shortfall of qualified tower personnel was found to be, quote, eroding the margin of safety and injecting risk into the system, end quote. The SRT urged action to, quote, urgently address this staffing crisis, end quote. Stratolaunch aims for commercialized hypersonics. Stratolaunch LLC has continued its efforts to develop a Mach 5 capable aircraft, helped along by a familiarly rutan esque design in the form of scaled composites rock. Stratolaunch let slip that they plan to test out their first prototype, the TA 1, before 2024. Another, TA 2, is scheduled for launch early in 2024 to prove the design can autonomously guide itself to a safe landing at Vandenberg AFB. The Talon series of aircraft will be just as reusable, saving millions over the life cycle of hypersonic tests. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Mount Rushmore helicopter tour is restricted to half a mile. The National Park Service and the FAA have published their now complete air tour management plan for Mount Rushmore. All flights must stay one half a mile away from park boundaries or 5,000 feet AGL. The plan isn't a surprise to local operators, being the stuff of years-long controversy thanks to the park's confluence of indigenous lands, controversial custody, overt politicism, and increasing crowds. Quote, These measures are designed to protect the park's natural and cultural resources, tribal sacred sites and ceremonial areas, and visitor experience within the ATMP boundary. The plan's operating parameters will be effective within 180 days from the date of signature. Mount Rushmore National Memorial is one of the parks in the national park system for which the agencies are developing an air tour management plan or voluntary agreement. Each air tour management plan is developed to manage commercial air tours in a way that is consistent with the NPS's mission, the individual park's purposes, and the FAA's authority with respect to aviation safety." End quote. And after these messages, SpaceX updates details about Starship IFT-2 test launch. There's a lot of places I get to at the end of the runway or in turnarounds that I need an engine running. So for me, it's very important to have a product that I'm absolutely confident with. I am very confident with the Trailblazer propeller. And when I'm flying air shows, I know that propeller is going to be right for me. Welcome back. SpaceX updates details about Starship IFT-2 test launch. SpaceX is releasing a few tentative details about the recent IFT-2 Starship test. On November 18, 2023, Starship successfully lifted off at 7.02 a.m. Central Time from Starbase in Texas and achieved a number of major milestones. All 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster started up successfully and for the first time completed a full duration burn during ascent. Starship executed a successful hot stage separation and successfully ignited the six second stage Raptor engines before separating the vehicles. Following separation, the Super Heavy booster successfully completed its flip maneuver and initiated the boost back burn before it experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly more than three and a half minutes into the flight at an altitude of 90 kilometers. Starship's six second stage Raptor engines all started successfully and powered the vehicle to an altitude of approximately 150 kilometers and a velocity of around 24,000 kilometers an hour, nearly completing its full duration burn. The flight test conclusion came when telemetry was lost near the end of second stage burn prior to engine cutoff after more than eight minutes of flight. The water-cooled flame deflector and other pad upgrades performed as expected, requiring minimal post-launch work to be ready for upcoming vehicle tests and the next integrated flight test. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Era News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.